Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm joined by Joshua Maguire, um, who, if you don't already know, is playing Brian um, Cudgeon in the Artemis Fowl movie, who, as you probably remember, is a bit of an LEP heavyweight. Jo <laughs> Joshua, um, had you read Artemis Fowl before being cast in the movie? I hadn't, no. You know, when I was at school, I kind of, uh, I, I think I just missed it in terms of my kind of age bracket, you know, um, yeah. but I certainly was familiar with it. Um, probably seeing posters up all around school, you know, of the of the book covers. Um, but as soon as you know the the, the film was happening, I, I I got straight on it, and I think I've got a couple of copies of each book actually, because numerous people sent me numerous copies. Sure. So yeah, I, I was certainly familiar with it by the time we started shooting. <laughs> did 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 sort of knowing a bit about it have any sort of influence on on how you played Briar? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, do your home, you know, if, if there's, if there's, um, you know, Briars and two of the books, if, if there's source material there, you know, absolutely, you know, it's priceless. Sure. So um, it was great to read, to read the books and, and, and find what little bits you could about Briar before, before even starting, you know? Sure, sure. So what, what was your, obviously you've got quite a distinctive LEP uniform uh, in the movie. What was your favourite bit about sort of the get the, the the LEP get up and and marching around in it? Oh, I mean, it's so it's such an amazing uh, costume that was you know replicated for the entire kind of army and all of um, the the different you know ranks of the LEP. Um, and mine was slightly different in that there was kind of more black in it. There was more. There was shoulder pads. Mm. Had a cravat. Um, that I loved. It was a nice touch. Yeah, that was a nice little touch. That was um, that was our costume designer's kind of idea at the last minute, and um, it just felt right. You know, a little bit of flair. Um, you know, it took about I think ten or eleven costume fittings to to get it to where they wanted. Um, oh. And you know, it was it took um, took a, a two people to get me into it. Um, <laughs> You know, there's, there's kind of there's kind of scuba gear kind of vibe underneath. Sure. Because it's it's made up. It's kind of it is it's it's armor. You know, mm. it, there's many zips that fold over and there's many pieces. So you don't want anything. Um, you don't want any skin getting pinched at any point. So <laughs> you're you're wearing kind of scuba gear underneath, and then you're strapped in. And I mean, getting into cars to go to set was an interesting <laughs> experience because you couldn't necessarily bend your knees that well. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I, I assume you don't, you don't any longer have a couple of people helping you get dressed every day now. <laughs> no, that'd be nice though, but no, no, I don't. <laughs> that, was just, that was just for the uh, three months of shooting. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, it was, it's such a brilliant um, costume. Um, and, uh, you know, all the kind of, the little details, the badges, the mm. kind of, um, the kind of microphone, the 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 earpieces to the hats. Yeah, um, it was amazing, and we shot kind of during the summer, you know, and our hot summers are yeah, are they getting hotter? And um, it was hot. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, do you still? Because because obviously you've you've got the old the the old ears in the movie. Do you still? Uh, did you manage to pinch a set of ears off the set? You know what? I didn't pinch a set of ears off the set. I I did actually manage to get my earpiece. Awesome. Which I, which I took. Yeah which was good fun. You know, all those little details are just so amazing. Um, yeah. But ears were, were definitely an experience. I'm pretty sure after each day, once they were taken off, they were done, I think. Oh, really? They, 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 but don't, don't quote me on that. But yeah, the, the ears took a while to get on and <laughs> that's time to get off, certainly. I, I, I was actually chatting um, to Lara, who plays Holly Short in the movie, um, um, last week. And... She mentioned um, that she would often sort of travel around with almost a bag of ears and, and just had to hope you didn't get stopped at, you know, it stopped at all. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. A bit of a Hannibal yeah. Lecter moment. <laughs> so yeah. as, as, a, as a relatively seasoned screen actor now, what's, um, what were your impressions of the two young leads, you know, Ferdia and Lara? Well, they're amazing, aren't they? I, I knew as soon as I met, I mean, I met Lara first, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought... Um, Oh, you know, watch out. She's, um, she's uh, going to be, I hadn't even seen her act and you could just tell she was such an intelligent um, and wise beyond her years <laughs> um, performer. Um, and um, yeah, and Ferdia I met, because um, actually we, we didn't actually share screen mm. time. 
Um, so, you know, on a film set, it be, can be quite odd because you're, you're like ships in the night. But um, sure. I, I saw him one day um, bet between scenes. So, yeah, I mean, and he looks the part, doesn't he? I mean, mm. look at the poster behind you. Absolutely, um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's quite um, the look, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite the look, yeah. And he's, he's you know, very smooth operator. So, I, you know, and, and having seen it now, um, I mean, they're just fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, oh, um, phenomenal. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what, what did you find most intriguing about Briar Cudgeon, you know, as a, as a character? Well, I mean, it's always nice to play bad guys. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think the thing that was most intriguing about Briar is that from the books is that he is, um, you know, he's not incredibly effective at achieving his aims. He, mm. He's quite um, impatient and opportunistic, um, but I'm not sure he's the greatest um, game player. Sure. Um, and I thought that was, and he's, he's certainly got an anger issue. Um, oh, absolutely, and, yeah. Yeah, he's very, you know, he, he comes from a kind of, um, there, um, there's a mention in um, the books that he comes from a lineage. I think he's part of a kind of political family. Yeah. And I think he feels entitled and he feels that he deserves uh, more credit than he's due, or he deserves to be put in positions that he hasn't necessarily earned. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. Um, all of that frustration and anger um, builds up. So he, and he can't bear um, root, whilst also simultaneously, you know, being in awe of her because, um, or him, because um, she's just this incredible leader you know, and mm. he's very envious of that and, and the position she's in. So he'll take any opportunity to, to get rid of Root, you know? Oh yeah, and he, he, he certainly tries his very best, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. So, I mean, were there any other, I mean, Briar Cudgeon is, is a very kind of distinctive villain, but were there any other sort of screen villains you took inspiration from for the role? I mean, I mean, in terms of like, villains mm -hmm. you know that the lineage of villains it's um there's a lot to pick from sure I mean, my main my main kind of source was the script and the books and i, I kind of think there's not really m many people like briar and that mm -hmm. he, he's he's a mix of like i said he's not a very cool customer he's not he's not um a snape or yeah. anything like that you know he's not as much he, he doesn't have the kind of I, perhaps Machiave Machiavellian intelligence of, of those kind of villains. Of a master yeah. villain sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 so, um, but to, you know, to play a villain is always a treat. And you just look back at the history of like Disney villains. Mm. Um, it's just, you know, you can take them from anywhere. You know, Ursula from Little Mermaid or, you know, Scar from um, The Lion King. All so different. To kind of, <laughs> to, to kind of maybe exist anywhere in around or near that um realm was just really exciting and you yeah. know you know artemis is is so much its own world um that it was it, you were able to kind of create something new and unique which which is always fun yeah absolutely yeah it's um it's a very distinctive story isn't it it's a very kind of unique story that that can't really be imitated and and, and you can't sort of find a lot to to tie it into really can you no 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 ab absolutely it's um it's totally unique and that's why it's and that's why one the books are so successful and why you know after such a long time mm. um the the film has been made you know it's been a, finally it's been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time coming you know oh yes that i mean i think well when the first book came out because i think you're a, you, you may be a couple of years older than me i think when the first book came out i was about 10 or 11 years old right and now i'm i'm certainly not wise beyond my years but i look i look beyond my years <laughs> I was I was going for the role of uh, Mulch Diggums. Yeah, well, very good. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you stuck with it, and finally, you've seen it come to fruition. Finally, we finally yeah. got there, huh? <laughs> yeah. How do you think uh, Kudrum would react in the face of an event as we're seeing now, this sort of a pandemic? Wow, you know, I um, I don't I I don't think he'd do very well, but also no. I think you'd see, you know. A kind of um maybe a, a vacuum in which to uh fill fill you yeah. know he, he he sees opportunities for kind of power grabs anywhere mm. 
So maybe now would be the perfect time for him. I just yeah. don't know whether um, his patience would last um, into <laughs> a detailed plan, you know? Yeah, he just, just kind of go, goes for it and, and sees what happens almost, really, doesn't he? Well, yeah, I think that's probably will probably be his downfall, much to his embarrassment. <laughs> In terms of how Briar sort of behaves, is there anything you, you would like kids to learn from his character um, or your character? Is there any sort of takeaway you would want viewers to have from, from you know, how leadership works in terms of how Bri kind of goes about things or? Mm. Well, I guess, you know, everything I've said, you know, hopefully don't, don't be, be like, like Bri. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way to do it. Yeah. It might look entertaining and it might be fun to see him trip over that um but yeah i guess he's not a role model in any sense no, you know? he's, he's a role model for impatience and entitlement perhaps mm -hmm. which two things i'm not sure um kids should be um taking advice from no know? and then, luckily i think the way briar's story kind of pans out shows it's not really the way to be isn't that right well, quite, I mean, especially in the books. Um, um, yeah, absolutely. I don't think, you know, power grabs, uh, impulsive power grabs are not really the way to go. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, do you know what? You, you do see them throughout history, but they, they don't tend to work out very well at all. No, in the end, yeah. Yeah. What's, um, aside from Artemis Fowl, obviously, what's, what, what would you say is your favourite movie of all time? Oh, God, that is such a difficult question. Um, I have to lay. I have to lay one really, really hard one in there for you, Joshua. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God, it's just it's it's so tough because the movie that was like my favourite when I was fifteen is now no longer. You know. And actually, yeah. Um, but you, it's those movies growing up, isn't it? It's it's your kind of Jurassic Parks, mm. things like that that you grow up with, and and as like you know now being an actor when you're young makes you want to be in the movies. You know. Yeah want to Absolutely. be in those things with action and adventure and crazy, you know, amazing effects and practical effects and all that kind of stuff. And Sure. Well, hopefully you know, Artemis Fowl will become that sort of movie for, for a whole new generation of fans, you know? And, yeah, absolutely. That's what, so I guess in, in the length of time it's taken to make, a whole new generation of fans are there for mm. the taking, you know? Um, but, you know, the, the, you, being on set on Artemis was, you know, really, you know, pinch you know, pinch, pinch me kind of moment because these, the sets um, was, were, were really heavily practical, you know, yeah. they were all built um, on sound stages and, and just kind of the, 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 the far background is, was green screen, but everything we're, you know, surrounded by immediately yeah. was all built. You know, and that it's just so as, as an actor, as just a person, it's exciting. Yeah. As an actor, just, um, they just, They've just released today, actually, uh, uh, on Disney Insider. They've just released a, a short segment um, that kind of shows some behind-the-scenes stuff, and you oh, can, right. yeah, you really get a, you, you get a very, very brief glimpses of um, some of the sets. You know, Haven City. Uh, they, they, they built Haven City. Oh yeah. Um, and they built Foul Manor, and, and you know, they. Oh my God, Foul Manor is one of the most extraordinary things I've ever seen. I mean, it ha it had, it was it was a fully functioning house. It was abs It was absolutely bonkers. That's crazy. Um, oh, it really, and you know, it's still there. <laughs> yeah, it's mad, um, isn't it? I heard, yeah, it had, had central heating and Wi-Fi and oh, yeah. everything All you'd that. expect a real house to have. Oh my, it, it, it you could live there. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. <I agree. laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll get to visit it. I mean, it's just absolutely, it's not, it's essentially not a set. Yeah. It's, it's a house. Who knows, maybe one day I can uh, get enough funds together and move in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think, I think we're, we, we've, we've got some great information. I think the fans across the board are so excited to see the movie. And, and for me, oh, Briar yeah. Cudgeon is probably one of my highlights to watch on screen. Oh, thank um, you very much. Very, very captivating and very, very accurately portrayed. <laughs> oh, well, that means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for you, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I think my favourite scene, and I think many fans would agree, is um, the uh, uh, it's it's in the trailer. So I don't think I'm giving away any spoilers or anything. But it's uh, Briar's plan to send the troll into Foul Manor. Oh yeah, great! It's, it's, he's bordering on the maniacal, where he's explaining what they've done to the troll to 
to yeah. ramp it up. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just filming all those kind of scenes and the scenes where, scene where Briar um, confronts Root mm. um, to finally take over. I mean, I think that's up there as one of my highlights: facing off and arresting Judy Dench. Yeah, I, I can imagine working alongside Judy Dench was, was quite the experience, huh? Yeah, and you know, yeah, and all the stuntmen who were just flinging themselves off everywhere and the hundreds of extras. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, you know, brilliant. And I really hope the fans um, like it and love it, you know? It's, they, they, they've been waiting a long time. That we have, that we have. <laughs> so thank you so much again for your time, Joshua. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, That's my pleasure. Disney's Artemis Fowl, available on Disney Plus, June 12th. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>